morning, Mesa. Good morning. This morning's scripture will be coming from Luke chapter 11, verses 15 through 16. That's Luke 11, 15 through 16. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, prince of demons, he's driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from the heavens. Aren't they doing great? Yeah. Amen. It's so good to be able to see how they've developed and uh, all of the talent and the ability that they have and uh, mainly the willingness to get up here. I didn't see too many nerves even. That's pretty good. You guys are doing really well. Um, one of the things I just found out about today, we did not know this prior, but apparently Scott Farr is going to be having surgery in the morning. He is going to have his toes removed on one foot and so on the top of his toes you got to write this down for me I can't get this right okay you'll have the bottom of his toes okay it's going to be serious surgery anyway it's very difficult uh, for him he's been having problems with his foot for many months now so would you pray with me this morning our Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings, and we pray especially this morning for Scott. We pray that the surgery will be successful, Father, and we pray that his spirits will be good. We pray also, Father, that you will be there for the healing and that you will make it all work. We just pray, Father, that everything will be his, to his benefit and that he will be able to see you and feel you in the power of all of this. We pray, Father, for your healing upon him and be with the family, fathers, they go through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, Senior Day. Spanish are going to be joining us in just a few minutes, so I don't have that much time. But uh, I did want you to know about one of the things coming up in June. Uh, June 11th, we are going to have John Smith with us. Uh, John, I know that sounds like a weird name, doesn't it? How can you be excited about John Smith? It's John W. Smith, um, if that helps any. But uh, John Smith is uh, an excellent preacher. He's been preaching for over 45 years. He has degrees in English. He has taught public school anywhere from junior high all the way through college. Uh, he holds several degrees, a BA in English as well as a master's in a a Master's of Science. Um, he has written 16 books, which has sold over 1.4 million copies. And his latest book is on the Holy Spirit and catching fire with the Spirit. And so he's going to come and present some things on that and on worship specifically on Sunday morning. It's a one day, so you don't have to worry about which day do I come. And it's going to be on Sunday, the day that you're usually here. So we've tried to make this just as convenient as you can. Uh, we are gonna have a potluck that day and we'll have an afternoon session and he will be able to speak to us at that time. You're gonna like John, he is, uh, he's a comedian, he's a very deep Bible scholar, he is one of those guys who just is incredible. I had heard him on many workshops before in places I had gone to uh, and he's actually living in Payson right now. And so we have him not very far away, at least for a little bit. And so he's going to come down June 11th. I hope you're going to make some plans to be here. All right, graduation day. Uh, turn with me to Luke chapter 15 and verse 11. It says, And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took the journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. And he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the field to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. 
That's a sad story. He was ready for graduation day. I don't know if your kids are like that. I don't know if you guys are like that. But our seniors a lot of times just can't wait to get away from home. I want to graduate. I want to be out. I want to be on my own. I want to do everything I can. And you waited so patiently, except for not so patiently, to the time when he could actually be out on his own. And so finally one day he decides this is enough. I just can't take it anymore. And so he asks his father for his share of the inheritance. And he decides, I, I want to go and I'm missing life. I really need to get out into the world, and I need to be able to see what the world is like. And he knows it's going to be great. He knows it's going to be fantastic. I mean, he's stuck on the farm. He needs to get to the big city. And so he's excited about being able to go to the big city. And sure enough, the father agrees. And he says, all right, I will. And he gives him his share of the inheritance. And he takes that, and he goes, and he spends it all. He's got so many friends, and he has such a good time, and he has no thought or plan for what he's going to do later on. Let me just have fun now. It will be worth it all if I can just have fun now. And that's what he does. He thinks graduation is about doing what you want. A lot of people think that. He's finally out from under his father, father's control. It's time to party. I can do whatever I think. And he wants it all now. No waiting. Let me just be reckless. Let me not be responsible. Let me just spend it all at once. And he lost everything. If the stock market would have just stayed up, it would have been fine, right? If commodities wouldn't have gone bad, if, 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 if. And that's what happens to us sometimes as we start thinking that way. But he began to be in need. Well, he knows at least that much. What do I do? I have to eat. And so he finds a job. But the job he finds is with a pig farmer. And the one thing that was so bad for Jewish boys was to be around anything that was unclean. Well, pork. You're not allowed to eat that. You're not even allowed to be there. You can't eat anything with, and he wants to eat what the pigs are even eating. But after all, that's got to be kind of the worst insult, doesn't it? But he's broken so many other moral laws and so many other laws that God had. What's one more? And he finally realizes, I'm not getting ahead here. This is not what I wanted. This is not where I need to be. He had lost everything, and I cannot live here. It's the end of his dream. He's destroyed. He didn't prepare. He had no plan. He's not responsible, and now what? And he decides, I need to go to my father. I need to go back to my family. And so he goes back to start over. He had lost his way. He says, I'll just be a servant. But of course, the father will not hear of that. He runs to meet him. He's a bad risk. He had lost it all. He has sins. And all of us get there, don't we? It's easy enough to say, wow, he shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. That was terrible. That was awful. And, and all of us get there, don't we? Because sometimes all of us are. And so his second graduation is when it's time to go home. Because he's learned from a different kind of school. He's learned from a school of experience. He's learned that, you know, my plan didn't go like I thought it was going to go. Everything didn't work out just the way I thought it was, was going to work out. And so there are times that are like that when things don't go the way that we think. Maybe because we never thought and maybe because... We just wanted to ignore it all. So there's life lessons from a new school, and it's graduation day, and he goes back to his father. He goes back to God, if we understand the story correctly. And I think we find ourselves there, too. Times when we thought we had it all, and we had forgotten about God, and we just need to go back to him. 
And we do find life when we go back to God. We do find that that's what's important. We do find that that's what's, what's critical. We find forgiveness, and the Father runs back, and the Father gives him, and the Father waits. He runs back, hugs him, and then he stands there, and he waits. He waits for the repentance because he knows that's got to come. That's got to be part of it. So when he does come with that, and it is part of it, that's when the real graduation takes place because he's repentant and he's humble, and then he can depend on God. We don't do well if we don't depend on God because there's just not a way to do this. And so the prodigal son, it's not where he wants to be. Do we have to go there? Can't we just be smarter and not go there? I would think so. But there are times, I think, when we just get uncomfortable with life. We don't want to be there anymore. It's just not right. It's not the place where we want to be. Because after all, we're more important. We've grown up now. We're 14. We know everything there is to know. Our parents ask us all about how to run electronics. We could take over the world. They wouldn't know. That's just what happens, right? And so you start thinking, I know all this stuff already. I know all this. And I am never going to need what they're trying to teach me. And we really believe that we can get ahead and that we can do all this and it'll all work out. I like this phrase. To be outstanding, get uncomfortable. Or get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because it's in those times when we are the most uncomfortable that we need to find what's real. He decides, I don't belong here. And the reason he decides I don't belong here is because he was never intended to stay there like that. He was never intended to stay in the house as a, as a son who's resentful of his father all the time. He was never intended to be there as a person who doesn't quite get it, who doesn't quite grasp what's going on. And... and He's got to be able to grow up and be able to progress from there. I would say not quite the way he does. It doesn't mean throw it all away, and it doesn't mean waste it. And he just went to the wrong place to find his, his new life. And he didn't realize, yes, I want you to grow up. Why do we have to rebel to get away? Didn't you do that when you were a teenager? Probably all of us had a little bit of that where we decided, no, I've got to get away. I can't stand it here anymore. I've got to get out. And we went to the wrong place to find it. The truth is, they want you to be successful. They're not trying to keep you at home. They'd be glad if you'd leave home sometime. Maybe not right now, but they'd be glad if you would leave sometime, you know. That gets to be later and later these days, it seems like. And so it's more of a controlled way to rebel or a controlled way to stand on your own. Parents need to let go. Let your kids go just as soon as they're ready to go. Of course, that may be later than what they think they're ready to go. We tend to say we want more excitement. But when we think other people should give us that excitement... I ought to be able to go find that excitement where all those exciting people are. And we we're finding excitement the wrong way. It is not in what other people give to us. Let excitement be by, by what you create, by what you do. And you have to be responsible in order to create. Otherwise, you just lose it and it all falls away. So you have to be in charge of what we make. There is a whole big world out there, and when you're ready, it's time to go. But don't go without God, because that's one of the things that's most important. We don't need to waste it all. We need to take responsibility and realize where home is. We need to know who our Father is and that we are in His house. And so go the right way. Nobody's trying to keep you and make you not go. I guess the best way to realize that we're in a different place or a different world is, is when you actually go to a different world. 
I don't know if you've ever been there before. I know several of you have been to El Salvador. Let me just share a couple of mine. Back in 2003, I went to Honduras. It looked like this. That's a place where we're supposed to build a house. Okay? Um, it's a very different place. Don't drink the water. Don't eat the food. You'll be just fine. Questionable on breathing the air even. I mean, you might not ought to be there. And we are way out in the country, away from Tegucigalpa. They have made a pad, and you can see several of the other ones up here in different places where houses have been done. It's on the hillside, and so you have to put it up with rocks and then put dirt in it and everything like that. In case you can't tell, this is me right here trying to dig a post hole. And uh, we put the posts in, and it's just a whole different world. It does not look the same at all. And it is not the same at all. You don't speak the language. You don't know what it's like. We were to build two houses. I went with the Miami group down there. So this is one house, and it's got to be a house within that limit. Here is the other side over here where we were to uh, be able to erect another house. But it's a whole different world doesn't even look the same, does it? There's the finished house looking across, being able to see, a, you know, well, that's not a house. That's a shed. They were pretty excited about their shed. Uh, it has a concrete floor even. And we had to carry every stick and every mail, every nail for that house a mile and a half up the side of a hill to get to that place. They don't have water. They carry their water. It's a very different place. So we decided to go, and uh, all this was planned, but we went to a place to be able to do medical brigade and to talk with people. And it kind of looks like this. We'll all give them numbers. Yeah, right. There's kids all over you. There's people from everywhere. All you have to do is stop, and all of a sudden, whoom, here comes all of these people. Oh, and we had two pediatricians with us from Atlanta, and we're trying to get kids organized. You notice the guy in the middle with the M16? We hired him just because of robbers. It's a different world. It's a different place. Here's VBS. All the kids sit down, very well behaved, watching a makeshift puppet show. That's how it goes. It's a different world. It's a different time. It's a different place. And I want you to go to those places. I want you to go to El Salvador. I want you to realize that there is a whole different world out there. And there are places to go to. And there are things that you can do. And there are ways in which you're able to be involved in all of these things. You may not know the language. And you may not eat the food or drink the water. But you can tell people who your father is and that you're there because of Jesus the second passage I want to read to you is from Luke 20 Luke chapter 2 and it is about Jesus and he went every year up to a feast and if we remember the story he went to Jerusalem with his parents and in the middle of that feast they decided or they were going back home and you know they assumed he's a good kid he's always with the other people and so he's always there and uh, they didn't miss him but he wasn't always there he had stayed in the temple in verse 46 it says and after three days they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers and when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? And when they did not understand the saying that came, he spoke to them. They did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them, and he came to Nazareth, and he was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. He's a good kid. 
But sometimes we need to put ourselves in an uncomfortable place. Maybe that uncomfortable place is Honduras. Maybe that uncomfortable place is El Salvador. Maybe that uncomfortable place is Mesa. Maybe that uncomfortable place is just trying to explain your faith. Maybe that uncomfortable place is what's going to make you grow. It's going to make you into a new thing, new person. And so Jesus, even though he didn't really run away, he wasn't there when his parents were looking for him. He was uncomfortable just staying home. I need to get out. I need to be away. I'm 12 I've got to be able to talk to somebody about this mission that I have. And so he goes to the temple and he's talking with the teachers of the temple and he's, he's being able to do that finally and it just gets later and three days later, he's still there talking. He has a bigger goal in mind. He's ready to leave home at 12. But he doesn't. He goes back and he's very submissive to his parents and he does it the right way and he knows there's going to be a time to go. It's not the same goal as the prodigal. Both of them were ready to leave home. Jesus' goal is what's eternal, not just what's fun for a day. It's not a joy ride. It's, Jesus is about bringing joy to the world. His was thousands of years in the planning. It wasn't just a whim one day, let me take everything and run away. Jesus didn't rebel. Didn't really run away, he just went to the temple. He did worry his parents. But he found something more meaningful, more important. And he was comfortable with God. He was always comfortable with God. He's comfortable reading scripture in the synagogue. He's comfortable with prayer. He's comfortable with church. He knew who his father was, and he did everything to please his father. There was no selfishness in that. And so I think that's where we need to be. We need to get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's how you break the plateau and reach to the next level. He saw a bigger purpose. He didn't have to destroy everything to get there. He skipped the part about leaving the Father. He just stayed with him. And when you look at the comparison of the two, it's a choice of how to get what you want, at least what you think you want, that freedom, that independence, that respect, that people who will consider you, the people who will listen to you, the people who will treat you like you matter, the people who will realize that you have a decent opinion, the people who will love you. The prodigal was loved for his money, he took the shortcut. But Jesus is loved by the whole world. Does it give us an idea on how to live life? There are graduation days for all of us. And maybe you get several in your life. One's from high school, maybe another from college, maybe another from a job, maybe another from life experiences. And I think that's where we get to. Maybe you find yourself at a dead end today. Maybe it's graduation day. Maybe it's time to go back to your father. By the time Jesus was 30, he was ready for full-time ministry. Are you 30? He was in his father's house. He was doing his father's work. It's not always an easy path, but it's the one where the father rewards. We graduate when we decide to change our life. When we decide, I want to be uncomfortable. I'm going to make myself and put myself in a place that isn't always easy. But it is always with God, and it will always pay off. We graduate when we come back to God. Maybe you've been prodigal. Maybe today's your day. Maybe it's graduation day for you to come to him. Would you come while we stand and sing?